Hello y'all, DB Sarah here. Uh, you're going to have to bear with me on this. This is my first time doing one of these videos. So basically what we're going to be doing is explaining a little bit more about the lantern. Uh, it's easier to talk about than it's actually to, uh, to text and, and type out in the, uh, the forum. But anyhow, basically we're going to go over the purpose of what this lantern was designed for. Um, if you look over on the background, you have all the other lanterns that I usually buy at the factory. Um, so I've you use a lot of lanterns between... Uh, Camping and hiking and power outages, even search and rescue in the past, uh, backcountry uh, expeditions, things like that. And um, I could never really find a good lantern because a lot of them had problems like, number one, they're usually too big. Uh, they run on D-cell batteries, alkaline batteries, things like that, which was never really a good thing for rechargeability or sustainability. Uh, they always all came with horrible tint, like the bluish color tint, things like that. Uh, really cheaply colored, like a low CRI, like zombie colored uh, bluish tints, They're just bad. Um, lack of modes, a lot of them just had on, off, or if they had, um, basically some had low, and a couple of more expensive ones had night light, but in others that had drivers, they had like really bad PWM in the, um, in the lower modes, so it was really bad for the eyes, things like that, and so on. And uh, just, they just don't have all the features that's really needed in a good sustainable lantern that's, uh, that's usable for uh, the long term. Uh, Again, like you look at these as the size compared to uh, the BLF design. Uh, there's the version 1 and the version 2. Uh, the version 1 was designed off the Skyray King last year, or year before last. It was basically the first prototype that I designed to uh, have all these features that uh, the lanterns, these lanterns miss, that miss you usually find from the factory. Uh, <coughs> including, like I said, the, uh, the features I mentioned also, the fact that a lot of them came with up-firing LEDs that actually had the LEDs on the bottom, so uh, very few had the LEDs firing down, which is much better to eliminate the eye glare and things like that, and eliminate the table area, or if it's hung up, illuminating the ground, and so on. Uh, so the purpose, that's basically the main purpose of the lantern, is building a compact lantern that's rechargeable, has good modes, better tint, better CRI, better quality because it's metal. Again, a lot of the factory ones you buy is plastic, even the more expensive ones like this one for $100, is, is plastic and uses alkaline cells and things like that. It really isn't a good one. And the run times in even these things with the best alkaline like energizers or rail vacs, like this one here takes eight cells, eight D size cells, so it gets expensive. And on high, it only runs roughly eight, eight hours, nine hours maximum, and it basically shuts off. Whereas in this case, uh, the smaller lantern, um, the BLF prototype is brighter than the larger one and will run for 12, 15 hours on high at much better output and much better tint at a fraction of the size compared to the, uh, the larger one. But yeah, those are just some of the basic features. Uh, so we're going to go through basically um, the design of the lantern. The original one again was based out in SRK, so and then we got acquired a Q8 to improve on that design uh, for the actual V2 prototype and hopefully into the production one. So we're going to go through the actual what I did here on the top starting from the top down. Okay, the very top itself is designed, it was actually what I machined of a solid chunk of aluminum, it's roughly an inch thick from here to here. Um, it's the same width as the whole lantern. And it serves as the heat sink because again, I use down firing LEDs on the top. And so the heat is up here on, on the top. And anybody who wants to really mod these things, it's got a flat top where the bolt, you can actually add like a CPU heat sink or something with fins on there or more metal if you want to for modifications, yeah. But even at 1.5 to 2 amps on high, it'll run like all night, and it'll get like warm to the touch or semi-hot, but not enough to burn you, even without fins. We could go with adding fins on the sides here, but I don't think it's necessary for this case, unless we were running, you know, modifying a larger lantern here. So yeah, so solid aluminum. Uh, the version one had originally just a threaded thing. But in this case, now we're going to a much stronger design with a bolt down through the center right here, which runs down through and threaded in the bottom base here. So, okay. Uh, so, the MC PCB is basically four LEDs in this one. Um, the new design for the actual production one is going to be uh, eight LEDs because we're going to incorporate the tint wrapping design that's uh, design that was mentioned a few times in the forum, and the former being developed by Toy Keeper. Uh, so, basically, we're going to have four. 5k LEDs on the outside edge and for 3k or 2700k high CR LEDs on the inside and these LEDs hopefully we can go with the Samsung uh, LH351 D series LEDs because uh, I do like the tint of these that were sent to me and I test the 4k and both the 3k 
probably can't see it because the camera is going to adjust these, adjust the light down. So the 4K is here, and the 3K is here. Uh, brightness on, on the 4K is a little bit brighter, but again, these are 351Ds versus the 351C or Bs over here. I'm, I'm sorry, but the, I like the tint of both these. The um, the actual CRI is very nice. Uh, there's not much tint shift. Very similar to a um, uh, Nichia 290C, but at much more efficiency, more output, and at less amps. So in the case of the uh, LEDs, I like these better than the XPL series or the 219 series for lantern use, especially. Um, the tint ramping will give a good feature. Like we said, we go, you can actually be able to adjust it from 5K down to 3K and anywhere between, or maybe 27K, depending on uh, what LEDs are selected in the, in the final build. So, yeah, so going down from the MC, down from the PC board with the LEDs on, uh, looking closely, let me adjust the focus on this because the camera is not set for automatic. Uh, here we go. As you can see, there's a center tube. The center tube is basically a sleeve over the bolt. It's roughly uh, maybe half inch diameter, maybe a little bit less. The bolt, again, is roughly one eighth or two and a half millimeters. So just what this center tube actually hides also is not only the bolt, it's the three wires. In the case of, in this case, only two wires, two leads, two LEDs on top. So there's no metal rods on the side or wires hanging on the side to create a shadow or anything like that. So it serves two purposes. and. Uh, if you look closely, the bottom in here is painted flat white, as well as the two that's covering center bolts flat white, as well as the top surface around the LEDs and the actual um, the star itself is is uh, flat white. The reason for that, I've tested chrome, uh, silver surfaces, uh, brushed aluminum surfaces, gloss white, and so on. And flat white appears to be the best surface to use for reflecting light and creating less hard light sh and shadows, things like that. Whereas if you look at a lot of the factory lanterns back here, they uh, they tend to have a uh, come from the factory with a lot of uh, chrome surfaces on the bottom and on the top in a lot of these cases. You probably can't see it there, uh, but yeah, you see that a lot. And the problem with the chrome surface is that it reflects the LEDs exactly like a mirror, so it creates a hard light beam, so a lot of glare, um, and it just seems to um, create like a sparkly effect. It's not really pleasing to the eyes. Whereas a flat white smooths out the actual beam, the beam pattern itself around the actual lantern in all directions. And by having both the top and the bottom surface surfaces of these painted the same flat white, it seems to create an amplification effect I found from testing. It seems to re, you know, light reflects back and forth, back and forth more, and it just reflects more beam downward and upward at a wider angle around the lantern itself without losing much lumens as much as what a chrome surface does. And it goes back to again to the globe um, frosting. Whereas if you look at the diffuser I have here, the frosting is much thicker. Like you can't see nothing inside of that. Whereas you can actually see the tube inside in this one, or, or, or a little bit on the LEDs on the top and inside. I find that these diffusers, like this one here that I have for the uh, the BLF Q8, it snaps on. It um, it blocks a lot of the luminance, lumens itself. Cuts a lot of the, uh, the actual glare, but it's just that it's it cuts a lot of the actual brightness away from the from the LEDs. And I find it was a lot of lanterns that have the uh, the frosted ones like that, you know, including uh, small battery operated lanterns like this. It just cuts a lot of the lumens and basically reduces the efficiency. So by having the frosting roughly 40% or less to the point that you can still see the LEDs a little bit, but enough to create a smooth pattern around that. So you're not losing a lot of the lumens itself, and um, it smooths it better. So it's a good balance having a slightly like that. So as long as you can still see through it a little bit, it seems like that's just a gift for the, uh, the developers to have a look at. Probably one of the better fact aftermarket ones I found that had that 40% or 45% roughly frosting was the uh, the Blitzwolf BWLT5 that was available a while ago. And like my rest of my lenders, this one is also modified. It has a high CRI uh, 4K LEDs in them because I didn't like the cool white that was in it. It's just not practical for a lantern. Great for a thrower flashlight, but for a lantern, you want something more warm, much more uh, high CRI, uh, more pleasing to the eyes, you know, especially at a campsite when you're illuminating a larger area. <coughs> so yeah, so not a complete frosting, but a mild frosting like I did in the lens is much better. And the lens itself 
is that uh, something I would recommend is going through is going with is the Lexan or polycarbonate type lens, which is similar to what safety glasses are made of, uh, snow mill helmet, glow visors, things like that, because it can take an impact and it doesn't crack. It might dent and scratch things like that. Whereas a lot of these other lanterns, uh, not so much the more expensive one, it has a polycarbonate lens, so it can you know it can take an impact, a rocket fall, it doesn't crack. Whereas these here with the with the acrylic lens. This one obviously has a crack because I knocked it over and crack because it's a cheaper way of doing that. It's a, it's a, you can always tell when it's sound. It's like glass to a point, so they're easier to break. Whereas this, if it was polycarbonate, it doesn't break. So in the design of this actual shape, I found much better than having an open just a sleeve, like some of these were open on the top and the bottom on the larger uh, factory ones. Is having a cup shape, which means if you go back to the drawings and you actually see the lens in the BLF forum. Of the cross section you can see it actually has the plastic material goes across the bottom as well so it's a single hole down through basically it gives it strength across the across the whole globe itself and uh, makes it stronger by having a shape like an actual cup instead of just an actual side sleeve open the bottom uh, so yeah for the lens itself 40 percent frosting made of polycarbonate and uh, at least probably an eighth of an inch or three millimeters thick would you know be something really strong in the case of frosting, uh, you could go with the actual plastic frosting or a frosted sleeve that fits down inside of a clear lens, which would work too. That means for modern moderates that want to do that, they can remove the sleeve and have you know a hard, a brighter light, where they can change it to something else if you want to put a pattern there and so on. But uh, that'll depend on what the engineers is going to do, what Barry works on, because he's the guy that's actually handling the uh, the design of this thing. Uh, but the engineers in China for for uh, production. So anyhow, yeah. So basically. Um, the V1 was designed, it had designed with a lanyard, but the lanyard connections are on the inside, which was a bad idea what I did here because of the fact that water seeps in through the sides and gets inside, which is not good. In this case, I ran the, la the lanyard, uh, let's see if I can zoom in here. The, the holes are drilled up through on the sides and goes across the top, so it means there's no connection to inside the lantern with the holes for the actual lanyard itself. So the lanyard is outside, so it means it's waterproof in that sense. There's also an O-ring underneath the head of the bolt. So when the bolt's tightened down, there's an O-ring that seals right here. Um, and as for other O-rings, the top of the globe has an O-ring, where it fits into a groove inside the top. Again, if you go back to the, um, the cross-section on the BLF forms, you'll see that. And on the base, the base actually has a recess area. And there's an O-ring around that. So when all this is tightened together, these O-rings are compressed between the globe and the top and the bolt. So this entire top section is now watertight. So it means if you're knocking in water, it's rain resistant, so on like that. So definitely having the globe as one piece makes it easier to seal with an O-ring on a base than having just a sleeve. Uh, that's another advantage of that. So yeah, going down to the midsection. Uh, look, here, oh, look carefully at the, uh, the BLF uh, Q8 again. As you can see, the lantern is only marginally taller um, roughly, let's see if I can focus on that again. My camera is not really doing a good job. Of focus. It's only barely an inch taller than what the BLF Q8 is without a diffuser. You add a diffuser on that, it goes much taller, obviously. But the, yeah, it's so the lantern is designed compact, even though it's based out of that, because half this section is removed. We don't need a reflector section. And one thing that we can do, if you go back to the last cross section that I uploaded on the forums, um, the actual production one, all these fins here down can remove because we no longer have to worry about heat build up in this section no more regards because the MCPCB is no longer on the bottom, it's on the top. And again, we're not driving the lantern at high amperage like the Q8 is being done. So a lot of these fins can be removed and placed at the bottom three fins, uh, knurling same as the body can be placed around here. And these fins here can be tapered and narrowed inward, not quite so deep to uh, you know, save weight and streamline the lantern even a little more so that this could be the same width as the top all the way down. So that's something that can be done on the, uh, the production lantern versus this. Um, it was mentioned on the drawing, I, put, I submitted a drawing to Barry, uh, here we have BLF Q8 engraved in the top. We could probably have BLF LT, like one of the, the submissions that were there was a great idea for the lantern name, uh, actually across the head of the lantern or on the side and back, whichever we go from there but anyhow that's basically the midsection so uh the charging circuit is something that we discussed um basically the only this one i hadn't had a chance to install that yet so basically if we go to the version one because this was based off a q light uh revision of the in the, the 105c driver which has moonlight i add a tp4056 charger on this thing 
and it works great at one amp even though some suggested going to two amps but again the problem with two amps unless it can be set up that it can be regulate the actual current detect the type of current charger is going in it whether it be a solar or a power bank or an RV type charging unit or a car plug-in charger or, or a adapter or something like that um, the one amp seem to work great because you're running the lantern at night uh, you can run it four or five hours at night and you're charging it up then most of the rest of the day. you're probably not using it during the day so you have like 10 hours 12 hours per day to charge so there's no real rush to have the charges thing in one hour unless you're constantly using it as a power bank I can understand maybe that but even then basically it's designed for a lantern not used as a power bank more so but having a power bank feature with the charger would be a good idea it was mentioned regarding using USB-C which I now I think is actually a good idea because USB-C supposedly has the capability of an output as well as charging in a higher current this one by the way is only a USB micro uh, the test I have done with the TB4056 1 amp was with a solar panel in particular I have tested and bought a lot of solar panels the ones I didn't like I've given away or they're in junk boxes but so far the only one that seems really work really well and sustain a good voltage is the e -Scene model 10 amp which folds up it has a little waterproof pouch on the side I've used this charger to charge this lantern up after running six hours seven hours per night it charges it roughly in eight hours per day charge no problem every day so with this charger a 10 amp, a good 10 watt charger and uh, a one amp charging circuit the lantern can run completely off grid for years it can basically sustain itself by using just the sun and power banks or so on things like that but yeah that's for the charger part and i do agree with going probably with usb-c if it's not if it's cost effective and uh, go from there with that it's usb micro and mini yes obviously it's going to be a little bit dated and it's going to disappear eventually and usb-c is becoming a thing so maybe the engineers can design it with usb-c that can charge the lantern plus also with an adapter like a dongle or something that can use it for charging as a power bank power out for like for charging your cell phone or other device like that in the production production model so okay so we're gonna put that one aside and back to the mid section so this is pretty much part one of uh, the lantern. The next part we're going to be doing shortly in a second uh, for video number two. We're going to start explaining more detail of the uh, other additions, features of the lanterns, um, the actual uh, people that's working on the developing thing, and some of the suggestions we can talk about on that. We'll see you again in a bit.